What's up my brothers and my sisters from another mister. Today we're going to do a full story comic book review of Spawn Unwanted Violence issue number one and two, the complete story. We're going to discover what File F is all about and the controversial and shocking truth behind Spawn and the Freak. Brought to you by Rated Comics. Before we get into the content, link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other comic books or some of our Rated Comics exclusives to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Timestamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. Here are Rated Comics who do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. With all that being said, let's get into the content. We begin this issue with the monologue about humanity since Eve's creation, talking about Adam and Eve going biblical here. Since Eve's creation, humanity has not had a single day of peace on earth. Instead, we've been in a constant battle over those conflicts and the evils we enact upon one another. The cruelty of that thought does not escape those who ache for a sense of justice. Knowing the cold nature of man has been perverse since its exception. Knowing we would taint our world, kill one another, God still created us anyway. And that constant strife, that never ending stream of sins and oppression, it could be exhausting. Especially for someone whose being can feel the emotional screams of those oppressed. Now, today, for whatever reason, Spawn is unwilling to tolerate it any further. So going back to this flashback a year ago, it's been months since Mark Rosen lost track of how long he's been inside this unknown bunker. He tries to not think about it, so he pretends he accepts what's happening to his life. The bed is perfect, like always in fact. Mark has never seen Spawn asleep, never. And Spawn turns out he freaks the hell out of Mark Rosen. What do you want? Oh, Jesus, I didn't know you were here, says Mark. I'm always here, except when I'm not. Again, for the hundredth time, Mark questions the sanity of his captor, Spawn. Come on, I need to show you something. Though Mark has seen this dozen times before, Al's transformation still unnerves Mark. The freak, says Spawn. I want to know where the freak's at. What about him, says Mark. Well, he's gone. I need your help to find him. And that's a reference to Spawn issue number 300. And Mark's like, well, maybe he doesn't want to be bothered. Maybe, says Al, but I still need to find him. So in the control center, Mark tells Spawn, you may want to relax. It could take days of scouring data points and search edges to even make a guess where the freak can be at. I don't have days, says Al. Input these names. Tell me if any of them died recently. And Al Simmons reads off a half a dozen names. These are men from drug cartels, says Mark. They don't exactly go public about their lives. Then cross-reference it with the other political, military, and criminal groups, says Al. He gives Mark another list of names. With those lists of names, they come up with Lima, Peru, and this visual. And Al is like, I want the exact coordinates of what I'm looking at. And Mark is like, okay, doing that now, we should have a one mile sweep of exactly where that's located. So we go to Villa El Salvador, Peru, and some Peruvian food does sound good right about now. 10 miles south of Lima. It's been five straight days of oppressive humidity, temperatures nearing the century mark. The children have grown used to it by now. So everyone goes about their business and these cartel guys show up and everyone knows those who lived in that village for exactly some time knows exactly what that means. They've come for the children and they take this random girl and that grandma tries to make an attempt to save her but you know what that attempt is not going to be good enough and she goes down for the count and that child is gone. Later we see this obese drug cartel boss just yelling at someone over the phone talking about I don't care, I don't answer the threats but I'll cut his head off tell him that so his henchman brings his little girl and the obese boss is like mmm this one looks like a delicious flower prepare her so they send her to this room with the robe and he tells her to put that robe on and her name is Teresa put on that robe and the boss will be with you but before anything sinister can go down the candles something has blown them out and then we go into this panel right here where the boss goes into the room and he's like, hey, my girl was supposed to stay with you. That bastard, he is pissed and he is livid. But a man in need can quickly move past his anger. Her robe is removed as tender kisses pepper her. This is kind of disturbing to read, man. Eventually, he wants to see the reaction in her eyes. No more mask, he says. He takes off the mask and he is very shocked at what he sees. The obese man recognizes that the young girl in front of him isn't the girl from the streets. It's his own 
daughter, Olivia. And the freak tells him, I wouldn't pull too hard. I glued that tape on her real good. And unless you like her to suffer and hurt, go ahead, pull the tape off. But she'll suffer like you did to the other children. And this pisses this guy off like, I'll kill you. That's my little girl. And before he can go in for the punch, the freak puts him in check and tells him, you're concerned about daughters now? I want you to see something. Horrified, the man sees his wife barely alive. She knew, didn't she, says the freak, about your sickness, about your disease, and she did nothing, and he pie-faces him to the ground. But I'm in a good mood today, so I'm only gonna kill one of you. Your choice, your daughter, your wife, or you. Before a decision can be made, Spawn walks into the room and tells him, walk away from this one, freak. I've got something more important to you. And Spawn sees Freak's anger at being interrupted, and Freak is like, and why would you do that? Because I said so, says Spawn. Cut down the woman, I've got the girl. And he uses his magic to remove the tape. And this girl goes up to her papa and they embrace each other with the hug. Spawn goes up to the freak and says, let this fish go. You can catch him another time. Oh, says the freak, so this is how it works? I take orders from you now? Then you made a huge miscalculation. Spawn's like, I don't think so. But we can discuss this elsewhere. And he pretty much handles this like a top G. You'll like what I'm offering, says Spawn. Behind them, the human family huddles reunited, but one of them can't just seem to count his blessings. He sounds the alarm. And Freak is like, you son of a bitch. In other words, I really want the Freak to be like, you mother... But, you know, anyways, that's how I would write it, but I guess the Freak don't talk like that. So across the compound, security is alerted, and the Opie's boss is like, you think you could just walk out of here? No, 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 no. Not after what you did to my family. And the Freak's like, your family? Forget them, says Spawn. Let's go. Nah, says the Freak. I've just begun torturing them. I said, let's leave it alone, says Spawn. And the man is getting all prideful, like, oh, well, then you got that backwards. I haven't begun with the torture for you. And next time, I'll do it to your daughters. And this hits a nerve response because I'm sure he's thinking about Cyan. What did you say? Your evil has completely blinded you, says Spawn. Then I'll blind those around you as those guards come swarming in. And it's exactly what Spawn does. He blinds them. After Spawn blinds him, he mimics the voice of their boss. Guards, they're on the left, and the guards go to their boss, and they let it rip on him. In New York City, inside the alleyways, Spawn interrupts Freak's moment with the cockroach, and he talks about this cockroach, how women and humans are like, why they hate cockroaches, because they're ugly. They don't bite, cockroaches don't bite, and neither do ladybugs, but because ladybugs look cute, People are not afraid of ladybugs as, like they are cockroaches. I ain't gonna lie, cockroaches are freaking nasty, man. So Freak welcomes Spawn, and the Freak to ask Spawn, so tell me, what was so important that you had to interrupt me while I was working? And it better be real good. So Spawn tells him, there's a mission I need you to run. An ugly one that involves hundreds of children and those that love them. And the demons involved are creeping in from every direction, and I don't know who they are yet. That's where I was hoping you come in, where you'll be doing your hunting. And Freak's like, okay, so what's in it for me? If you run into any problems, I'll let you decide how to solve them. Well, things will get messy, says Freak. And Spawn's like, I know, that's why I chose you. <laughs> Meanwhile, thousands of miles to the north, there's a country where those who harbor thoughts of oppression are able to lift their voices. There's a protest going on. In a collective gathering that has played out thousands of times in the past century with a message that's been fairly consistent. One that many feel has been ignored. Thankfully, with such raw emotions laid bare, most gatherings remain peaceful until they aren't. And once the first domino falls and once somebody throws that first empty glass bottle of beer or whatever it is, others will soon follow and pandemonium will erupt. And the streets need to be cleared because there's too much violence going on. But as it happens many times throughout history, man's greatest flaw is his emotions. His emotions can quickly upend any sense of humanity. In this case, tear gas chases out most of the protesters, and this single mom holding onto her child tells her to hold tight, all in the hopes of keeping the peace. That's why they put the tear gas out there, while altering others to stay away. Now we go to this hospital in Pennsylvania, a cancer patient is in his bed resting. It's the night shift. And the only sounds are the warring machines and labored breathing from this little girl, along with the slight snores of the parents asleep at her child's bedside. Their prayers, all asking God to keep the presence of death, the Green Reaper, away from their doorways. Well, what about the freak? You forgot about the freak. Try as they might, 
death shall pay a visit upon all our lives in due time. Why you gotta write it like that? Hell no, nah, forget all that. That's a cruel certainty we must accept. And the freak cuts off this little girl's name talk off her wrist. Down under the hallway, this guy, this patient, is telling this funny story to this doctor. The doctor's like, man, I wish I was there, Neil. That's awesome, bro. Whatever that story is, it's left up to our imagination. And Neil tells the doctor, well, my wife didn't think it was funny, but she's a bit uptight. Well, you should get some rest. Nah, I can't do that because I got to wait six hours before my next sponge bath. He's just having a ball here and he's just flattering all the people. So who this guy is, his name is Neil Gorman, head of the science division for a biomedical conglomerate. They found a small dark spot on his latest x-ray, but was told it wasn't anything to worry about. They just wanted to run some tests on him. Hello, Neil, says the freak. He attempts to press the help button. It doesn't work, Neil, says the freak. Someone must have cut the wires. Minutes later, the freak tells him, hope your straps aren't too tight. Let me ask you something. Did you ever think about the damage you're going to do to the people when your company poured all those chemicals into their water supply? Or was it just for the profits that mattered? You knew those people would get sick. And this guy, Neil, is like, please take whatever you want. Oh, good. I'm gonna do that, but you're gonna help me create a diversion first. And he shows the name tag of the little girl he rips off the wrist. And the, all these beeps go down and beep, 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 beep. Code red, this guy is going into cardiac arrest. At the empty stage, the freak gets to the files he came for, the terminal youth children files. While in the streets of a giant city, a different trauma is on full display. A mother tired carrying her child attempts to rest, which is interpreted as a sign of defiance. As all this tug of war is going on, all this violence is going on, the mother is separated from the child as the child tries to hold on to her own mother. The young girl is confused. She just wants to be at her mother's side. Fearing she's being abandoned and combined with that limited visibility with the tear gas, this horse comes crashing down on her and the result is heartbreaking. Everyone stops and someone yells to call an ambulance. Ignoring their own safety, others gather trying to help any way they can. Why is this happening? Because some young mother brought her daughter to a protest carrying a cardboard sign. Just a damn cardboard sign. That and the hope of making their voices be heard. And if not their voices, what about their prayers? Though after centuries of suffering, millions gave in to the doubt that even God could not hear them. So now, if their God won't intervene, the faithful may need to put their hopes in the hands of another. I guess that other is our boy Spawn, and Spawn looks at the little girl like, who? did this. He checks the injured girl while simultaneously feeling his rage grow. He knows who's behind all this. You! And before we can find out who that person is that's behind it, cops surrounding him tell Spawn to freeze and don't move a muscle. And that's where we end Spawn Unwanted Violence issue number one. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below. Let me know. I mean, at first glance, I'm in. I'm happy that this is a short mini series, so we're going to get to this hopefully explosive and really cool conclusion in the next issue, but I'm looking forward to it. We begin this issue exactly where we left off in the last issue. The cops come in and they order Spawn to put his hands in the air and when one of the riot cops tries to cuff him, they couldn't move Spawn and they consider that resisting arrest. For the past two minutes, they've been attempting to make that arrest with zero effect. Regardless of their numbers, they're unable to budge him a single inch. While every moment of the incident is being captured by people with cameras, cell phone cameras, face masks, everything, they're all catching us on site right here, right now in life. Now, what began as a peaceful protest somehow devolved into a riot as dozens of mounted police attempted to disperse the crowd. Now, among those that were injured was a young girl attempting to flee on foot, but no answers yet as to what caused the escalation, and there's no confirmations to the extent of this young girl's injury. Now, keep in mind of this young girl because she plays a key role in this issue. As you can see in the news footage, the police have surrounded the man who calls himself Spawn. Gunpoint at his head but you know what I don't think that's enough so we're gonna call this brother officer Georgie tells his comrades back away I got it from here you're resisting arrest and that gives me the right to use deadly force so you need to move now and spawn you know says no and he shows that he's unarmed by removing the symbiote and puts his hands openly but emotions are high he shoots <laughs> And though he's been stuck in the center of his chest, Spawn, Al Simmons, 
doesn't move and everyone catches that on camera he's unarmed and the crowd knows that as they verbally explode jimmy says one of the comrades you're right everyone let's clear out the crowd we got more action to do and the guy's like no we can't do it like this now with all these people around you know this is social injustice at its peak right here in this issue but meanwhile we go to an abandoned warehouse somewhere and the mission that spawn gave to the freak was simple find their files and he goes through the files and if you only take one of them make sure it's the file with the letter f in it so Freak is looking at all these pictures and strings attached to connecting the puzzle and it starts to make sense to him, at least on the surface. And the thing about Freak is, is that when he puts his mind to it, he could find anything. And he found this guy. This guy's name is George, drinking at a dive bar called Riley's. He asked the bartender to put him another drink, but he asked for where the bathroom's at. Down the hall to the left, but fair warning, sir, our janitor has been sick for a few days. And sick he has as he sees his toilet looking like, yo, man, this is a disgrace to shit itself right there. Target, bullseye shit, band-aids, beer bottles. I wouldn't piss in that thing. Ain't no alcohol, ain't no tequila to make me go that desperate. I'm, I'm finding the nearest bush, bro. And he gags. But realizing maybe he doesn't need to go that bad. So as he attempts to leave the bathroom, the light flickers off and on. And when the color comes back on, the freak makes his entry. Hello, George. Your fancy briefcase. What's in it? This scares the shit out of George. He's like, what the hell is this? I'll repeat myself. If you're deaf, says the freak, what's in the briefcase? Um, nothing. I don't believe you, says the freak. And 12 seconds has passed and the freak dunks his head in that yucky <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucked up toilet right there. I need you to decipher what's in those folders you were carrying. Unless you need to be somewhere else, George. Nah, he ain't going nowhere else. Not with all that stink and poo on him. Nah, he's good. He's good. Now, back to the standoff between Al Simmons and the cops. It has reached its peak and it's been a two hour mark. He doesn't like the lights. It's 1 a.m. They shine the lights on him and they're ready to use all the force necessary to get spawned moved. But 20 minutes later, a SWAT team appears. After conferring their plan, they agree that that's their best chance whatever the plan they came up with and this guy tells and the mayor says you have his full support so kind of ironical here they link spawn up with chains strand him up with chains he remains unmoved and guess what they link those chains to the truck and they push on the gas and haul ass but the truck is not moving the immovable object spawn he's using his powers to stand firm and stand tall and even the guys in the truck is like yo man step on it what the hell you think i'm doing man you think i'm just lollygagging just dragging ass but along with all this that's going on the chain snaps which causes the truck to go into the building causing millions of dollars of damage to the city so instead of cutting their losses some just can't let this go and this guy officer jimmy's like i'm tired of this shit you listen to me he goes up to spawn you listen to me you piece of shit i'm bending over backwards trying to give you options i don't know how you're doing what you're doing but this has to end what's my crime says al everything as officer jimmy walks away so he got one last chance to do as we say your call and i was like man my hands are up in the air i have no weapons i don't give a shit i need you to move no says spawn so they fire and they unload hundreds if not hundreds of rounds on him but to no effect they hit their target but he still doesn't flinch and because he doesn't flinch this brother would make kobe bryant proud right about now in fact his body rejected their assault and for a brief moment that night among all the chaos everything stopped the silence was deafening until it wasn't now authorities are coming in they're interested in the ongoing events as a stream of new yorkers gather towards the immovable man while a child hurt in the protest was tended to while still inside the barricades and for this man this spawn all this was about was a life of the young girl she was a symbolic of our past so they eventually bring in the negotiator thank you for letting me approach you she says so how do you want to end this i know your name is al simmons but how do you want to end this and he just stares at her like mm okay look says the negotiator i can't help you if you won't talk to me al those men behind me they want your skin they're hoping this conversation goes nowhere get that and al's like i don't want your help okay understood then why not just leave and disappear it's what you can do right and al's like you don't get it do you i'll go when i want not when they tell me why says the negotiator 
Ask them. They've been doing this for centuries. And she's looking at him like, is there anything I could tell them? Yeah, tell them I ain't moving. And she's pissed. You know, that ain't her job as a negotiator. She has to go back to them with something. She tried a bit longer, but she knew she was wasting her time. Last question. Is there anyone you'll listen to, says the negotiator. Yes, says Al, but they hurt her. So she goes back and her superiors ask her, was there any luck with the situation? Not really. Mention something about someone being hurt, but whatever's going through its mind, it's not about to change him anytime soon. And this guy's like, if this carries on into the morning, we're screwed. The feds are already on their way. And this girl tells them we got a call from the Pentagon and they're pushing this as a terrorist threat. I mean, shit, they want to bring the whole military on and they don't want that. So they want to know what's the next plan of action so officer jimmy tells him let me make a call i've got an idea and i promise no more violence okay we'll see about that <laughs> elsewhere can't be said as the freak is going through these briefcases and he's been pondering over these files that george previewed him to he's looking at him like oh you guys like to write stuff in code don't you makes sense your bosses have always been quite careful but I think it says here a folder for each letter of the alphabet. Is that right? I can't figure out the rest. Spawny says this is your size list of how many of you demons and angels are hiding on earth. Just need a little help from you, Georgie. And Georgie's gagged up and Freak is like, oh yeah, that's right. You can't talk. Let me rip off the tape. And there's a rat tail sticking out of his mouth. So Freak pulls out the rat from his mouth because, you know, he has to double gag him. And Freak tells him, I keep coming across these letters. Wow. And George is like, well, let me see the other papers. I know some of the encryption. Freak gives him 10 minutes. And 10 minutes later, George tells him, you were right. There is a list and 26 files. Where, says a freak, where are those 26 files? And George tells him, it's a building just south of Detroit. I'll write down the address. And what about F? It has a master list, but it says something about it being different, says George. And what about those kids that got poisoned, said the freak. And George is like, hey, it's just collateral damage. They were developing certain drugs. In case their hidden agents weren't able to finish their missions. What kind of drugs, says the freak? You know, the sort that altered the minds of young recruits. Dozens of dictators would pay billions for that. So the kids were backup plans, says the freak. Oh, well, George is like, you could call it that. Then I need a backup plan, too, because what if I fail? which I won't or if I can't find the files which I will I can't have a witness so my plan is to kill you George just in case because the freak said he's gonna do what the freak wants and spawn gave him that authority to do so to find that information for spawn now for Al he doesn't know when or if this will end so the cops are like you know what we just we're tired of this shit this gets wild and shit's about to go down so a machine built for construction is now the last act of desperation to get spawn the move even the negotiator is like yo this is crazy and others think so as well and jada the little girl that was hurt earlier was like mommy they're gonna hurt him just relax jada it'll be okay so everyone's watching his live this is insane but hey desperate times call for desperate measures so the negotiator asked spawn one more time why are you doing this and i was like you're asking the wrong question why aren't you doing this with me is the better question you're a woman you know what it's like to be thought of as less than constantly being told to stay in your place to obey the rules their rules and she tears up the question isn't why i'm taking a stand it's when will you take yours i don't need your damn lecture says a negotiator i busted my ass for every inch i've gained you're a man i'll trade places with you any day but whatever case you're fighting for this isn't how you do it it just brings unwanted violence okay i can appreciate that call back to the title actually says al i'm trying to do the opposite now you know that statement is full of hypocrisy given the mission that he sent the freak on so like two heavyweight boxers the opponents make their first moves and this machine lands the first blow and spawn activates a symbiote and guess what he doesn't move on and on it goes each round like boxers taking on more time and more hits than others would like to take thrust counter block until one of them just gives up and that machine breaks but the bout has taken too much time reinforcements has arrived and spawn for now stands victorious in the face of an army tank that's the next thing so general bauer comes up and introduces himself to lieutenant al simmons i know you were a good soldier son i'm not your son says al so i'm giving you an order leave these premises immediately do your patriotic duty says general bauer or what says Al? I think you get the idea. Go to hell, says Al. Okay then. 
your funeral then so they get the target in his sight and general barrel's like yo i assure you this is not where you want to go you don't want to do this and spawns like i can say the same for you son now he didn't say son but i think that would be a, like an added tension building moment right there waiting for the orders general and before the order could be given the girl comes in hold your fire says general bauer and she tells spawn don't let them hurt you and spawns like but they hurt you it's okay i'm okay i'm gonna be fine you've done enough and jada gives spawn a hug and her mom comes in jada oh my god why'd you run away baby and jada's like don't cry mommy everything will be okay and that's all he was waiting to hear the only words that really mattered to him in that moment i'm okay from the little girl so with that spawn slips away into the shadows leaving humanity to clean up its own mess now meanwhile in the outskirts of detroit michigan at that warehouse those protecting the small office have been dealt with by the freak and tonight a very specific box has been found containing 26 folders with the folder f in it but the most important one is empty they said f was different it contains names of those disguised as humans hiding on earth and none in the inner circle ever referred to it as a file it was more than that much much more a storage unit with the letter f and all the f's inside of it just has evan and hell wanted it to be and that's where we end this issue of spawn unwanted violence issue number two look i'm not sure where to go with this if it's just the fact that all this unwanted violence was because of a little girl that spawn wanted to protect and make sure she was okay you know i feel there was something missed here that's just me i, I mean honestly man i feel a little let down with the issue because I, I like spawn i enjoy reading spawn i enjoy reviewing spawn and i think spawn has some of the most gangster stories out there but just for the little girl to not be hurt and spawn is like oh it's cool you know i'm cool like that i don't know man i feel it was wasted now on top of that the side plot with the freak i know it advances the story in a larger spanning universe of all the spawn titles but just to kind of get lift with the not a payoff i think what i'm more disappointed with is probably not the fact that spawn was standing up for the little girl her being okay was all good because i think that highlights spawn's character me thinking about that in hindsight and i know this book highlights social injustice but to also not have any payoff with the side mission of freak and it just leaves you with like all this foreplay and no action i think it's a little bit of a disappointment so i had to see this mini series through because it's only two issues in hindsight hey i still enjoy reading spawn i just thought this had room for improvement but what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know and also if you'd like to purchase the comic and or some of our other rated comics exclusives or other comics link in description don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com lastly this review is sponsored by coffee so if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee link in description or donate to the super thanks but the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to rated comics youtube channel thank you again for watching until next time.